Just look what turned up the other day. It's a wonderful thing. I wonder what it is. Wow. Okay, do that again, Will. Look at the glove, Tim. <laughs> Excellent. Whee! <laughs> Hello, engine. It's an old stationary engine made by Bamfords of England. It arrived very well wrapped from right at the top of Ireland and I'm very excited to see it. It's not seized and it has compression. How exciting. Will and I struggled to get it down the barn and into the workshop. Over half a ton of oily loveliness. We just needed to get it out of the way of the horses and have a good look at it. I had to buy this engine unseen because of the Covid lockdown so it was quite a risk and I'm relieved to see there are no glaring faults, no cracks, nothing major missing. The previous owner assures me she has run but I really don't know when that last was. The other end could be um, air intake as well, couldn't it? Well, the whole thing is, yeah. It rushes around everywhere. So actually, how do they oil the tappets? That normally, that would be splashing around with yeah. a bit of oil in there. And, but, and there is, isn't there? I mean, there is, I mean, it's quite oily for something that isn't... Yeah, and the push rods, they would be oiled as well, wouldn't they? But then that's curious, because that means the air intake is, is full of well, atomised oil. That's good. <laughs> I don't know. We were thinking of stripping it down, but everything looked in reasonable condition. We spent a while trying to figure it all out. Something's happening. Let out. Yeah, there's a bit of water in there. A bit of gunk. There's a bit, yeah. So well, it's we could flush be... it when we got the tank connected. It's a single-cylinder diesel engine, but not like any that either of us had met before. In the end, all we did was change the oil. If we can hear her running, we can decide then what needs doing, maybe. Doesn't look too bad, that bit. Top of it. So, this week, we brought her back down the barn and put her on skids we borrowed from the slarch. and then tied her to Will's 1962 Land Rover and pulled her into the field. Apparently this particular model was exported from England to Cork City in Ireland in 1950, so there's a good chance it went from there straight up to the Donegal farm and has been there ever since. It is a beautiful machine, but I didn't buy it as an ornament or a museum piece. I'm hoping to put it back to work. As you may know, I'm setting up a charcoal production line. As part of that project, I'm going to need some way to process the timber into small enough pieces to go into the charcoal kiln. So that means different machines to cut up the timber and some way to power those machines. My cunning plan is to set this engine up in a new engine shed and connect it to a line shaft so one engine can power multiple machines. But that can't happen just yet because the horses are still in the place where the engine shed will be built. So for now, it'll have to be set up temporarily in the field. Of course, it will be covered up from the weather. As soon as Sandra's new barn is built, then the horses can move and I can build the shed. OK! Now this engine has no electrics, so there's just a cooling system and a fuel system. It's water-cooled, so it needs a big tank of water. And, and there's no water pump either, so it relies on having the tank 
higher than the engine so the hot water circulates by thermal gravity. It runs on diesel, which is gravity fed from a tank and then filtered and pumped at high pressure into an injector at the top of the piston cylinder. Sounds simple enough. I mean, no, we're we trying to bleed the... Yeah, we haven't turned the fuel on, Deb. Sorry, break it to you. <laughs> that fuel? Yeah. Okay, we turn the fuel on there. Oh, okay. It's on now. Ooh. Ooh. Keep on it till it stops Stop sparking. The bleed. Do you remember what you did? No! <laughs> of course I don't remember. What do you think? But I got the instruction book. What that little thing was, I remember. <laughs> Starting engine. It is most important now to ensure that pump is free from air. To do this, remove fuel pipe from pump to nozzle. Pump. Also, nut A on pump itself. Figure 9A on page 13. Oh my goodness. Raise spring and small valve. Under nut A, place priming handle 40 in run position. And when fuel flows free from air, lift priming handle to stop position. <laughs> we bled the system and primed it as per the instructions. Okay. It's not going. Go all the way around. I can't because I've got compression. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all good. There you go. That's a decompression lever <laughs> in the start position. Place starting handle on crank case, crankshaft governor side. Go on. <laughs> it's too exciting for words. Hang on. Now, now what do we do with it? I can't imagine what After doing. two or three turns, lower decompressor lever to run position, continuing with one or two further turns when engine will fire and gather speed until checked by governors. <laughs> oh, this is too exciting Seems for like words. not very many cranks it's after. I don't really believe that. Uh, no, exactly. It doesn't, doesn't mention the easy start either. I'd rather <laughs> not keep cranking it after that either. Because it's telling you to crank it through compression there. Well, it's helping. You're just helping it. <laughs> if it fires, how do we turn it off? This all the way down. Yeah. That's all we can do. OK, I'll go first. But when I'm worn out, you have to take over. You're in charge of that one. Tell me when. Then we set the decompression lever in position and crank the engine. <laughs> Nothing much happened. Okay. I mean, it just stops it abruptly, doesn't it? Come on then, come on. Up we go. Up we do. One. Yeah, just keep it going more slowly. <coughs> yeah, there's no way you're going to go past that with... <coughs> Made a bit That's of noise. kind of, you need that sort of speed though, because it only did, just got yeah. past that. It kind of gets, gets a bit scary as you wind yeah. the speed up. Yeah. Like, this is going to destroy yeah. me. Yeah, exactly. It's a fairly safe starting happen, isn't it? Yeah, I guess the point I just can't go fast enough like it because it slips off. So that's diesel in there. Finally, the season. Which we didn't see the first time. That's right. Woo. So that says something. <laughs> <laughs> Go. 
Go, Will, go. It sounded a bit different then, eh? It did, it did. Something's happening. It's, it's waking up. <laughs> the dragon is pegging his way. Of course, more than 70 years have gone by since this engine was new. Undoubtedly, bits are worn. The valves may not seal as well as they once did. The injector pump might not work as well as it should. Some say that modern diesel fuel itself is not as easy to start as it used to be. I don't know. I only know that we worked really hard. And then... <laughs> Fantastic! That's weird. Yeah, this is a bit amazing. <laughs> amazing. It didn't seem like anything was different for a while there, but it didn't stop. Like it didn't. Well, go... it's working. Well, kind of. With water. Yeah, I mean, okay, she jumped around a lot. Like this went high. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It like needs to be tethered or something. <laughs> <laughs> I actually thought it was just clicking. <laughs> but it started. Uh oh. They could have laminated every page, didn't they know this one? Was <laughs> so heavy, it <laughs> jumped about like a bloody kangaroo. It got, but it kind of got to. It jumped a lot, and then it stabilised to a bit more of a vibration. I mean, it was still a fairly hefty vibration. It's far quieter than I had thought. Yeah, it's a pleasant enough noise. You can't see that well from the video, but the whole engine was walking quite quickly away from the water and fuel tanks. We were worried that the pipes would be stretched and something would break. That's why we turned it off so soon. So we knocked steel bars into the ground to try to keep it in place and tried to restart it. And nothing happened. Close. Very close. Which was odd and frustrating. We decided that perhaps we were too tired to get it running fast enough, so we gave up on it. And the next day, I bled the fuel again from scratch, and eventually, it did start again. Though, of course, the camera wasn't running then. What a relief to see her running. If anyone can tell me what I'm doing wrong, then please do. It would be handy if it didn't take two days and two people and very sore arms to get it going each time I need to use it. But really, what a wonderful thing this is, don't you think? Not just a magnificent piece of engineering, but a living, breathing machine ready to do some serious work. Hats off to the brilliant people who imagined, designed and made these engines long, long before CAD design tools came to help. I can't wait to make some contraptions to connect to it. <laughs>